Hey guys, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for your support. Today, I'm asking the question, what is wrong with this picture? And I'm not referring to this picture, although there was a problem with this picture, uh, or the one before it. Um, originally, when this came out in 1957, it was called Playboys, and they used um, a pinup type image, Playboy type image, and Playboy typeface for the cover. Uh, finding that is pretty rare these days, but um, Hugh Hefner was not happy about it, and he uh, made them change the record, uh, to the cover art to this. So, you know, it's it's this video is not about that issue. It's about reports of problems with this record. So I'll get to all that in a minute. If you um, are new and haven't already, please consider subscribing. Thank you for uh, all your support. If you haven't subscribed yet, um, please hit subscribe, hit like, hit notification, and you'll be sure to get notified of any new content that comes up. So the reports were that side two of this record was unplayable. And, you know, when you see negative reviews of things on the internet, um, they tend to be concentrated into the negatives. The people that are having fun playing the record with no problems are not really making comments, most, most of them. And so it can seem a little lopsided, but this was a little more prevalent than most problems. And it got to the point where Joe Harley made a statement. Joe Harley is a producer of the series. Kevin Gray uh, mastered this tone poet. So um, he said that the record is re a very dy dynamic recording and some players will have some some uh, record players will have problems if they're not set up correctly and that there was no issues with this record so that struck my curiosity because that sounds like something that is a good test for your system and i'm not saying that there are no um, defective records out there there are um, some people have gotten records with visible defects in certain places, um, mostly like a stitching problem. So that would cause the stylus to jump, groove. And, um, but people were saying that their, their stylus was jumping like several times throughout side two. And that got my curiosity enough that even though I wasn't planning to get this record, um, I've been a little more, careful with ordering records right now with the economy and stuff. I'm a little more particular. I'm not buying everything. Uh, not that this is a bad record by any means. Um, actually, I'm kind of glad I got it now because I'm enjoying it. But I wanted to see if my system now, as it's set up, could play this. And um, I recently, uh, if you watch a couple videos, I'm going to link um, I, I recently updated my system with a ModWrite PH 9.0 phono stage. Prior to that, I updated my cartridge to a HANA SL, and um, I'm getting very good phono reproduction now. I also reset my whole system, leveled my turntable, went over all the settings, anti-skate, tracking force, tracking angle, and got everything dialed in perfectly. And I think that's the secret to playing a good copy of this record. So assuming there are, maybe there is a bad stamper or a bad run of pressings that have stitching, but Joe Harley said there's not an issue with this record. And I have to agree, there's not an issue with this record. My system played it through just fine. I was like, wow, I was surprised because I thought, oh, only megabuck systems are gonna be able to play this record. Not true. I mean, my system, I have a basis turntable, but it's the entry level one. Uh, it's, you know, I don't know how old it is now, 20 years, maybe. <laughs> um, it's, it's old. And the Rega turn, uh, tone arm, the Rega 300 tone arm, and, you know, the, the Hanna ML. Um, apparently, the synergy in my tone arm and cartridge combination works because there's 
no resonances that are pushing the needle out of the groove or causing distortion. And I think that's the key to playing this record is to double check all your settings and play around with anti-skate, with tracking force, you know, assuming you don't have a defective record, assuming it's one of the good cuts. Um, it's perfectly playable. I played it without distortion. You know, the recording is very dynamic. I was surprised, um, you know, for a mono recording from 1957, sometimes it gets, it gets, it has a jump factor. It's like, wow, they get really close to, to peak, you know, and that could cause resonance issues, I, I believe, with uh, certain tone arm and uh, cartridge combinations. And that's probably where this is reported problems are coming from. But I'm here to tell you that there are good copies. It does play well. Um, it reminds me sort of of the situation when the Miles Davis Relax in One Step came out. And people were saying there was issues with that. Um, when I got that, I still had my old cartridge. And though I didn't have skipping issues or anything like that, it did seem a little bit hot and distorted until I got the HANA ML, uh, SL. The HANA SL is a Shibata stylus, by the way. So maybe certain stylus profiles can play this a little better than others, but it should play fine on most competent setups that are done, that are done correctly. And if you're not sure, or you're not really versed at setting up your system, it might be uh, a good time to kind of look at that and, and have an expert set it up for you. But uh, I enjoyed the record very much. Chet Baker, Art Pepper, Phil Urso, Carl Perkins, Curtis Counts, and Laurence Mirable. Mirable. Um, I don't know how to say his name, forgive me for that. Um, very, very fun, evocative of the era, 1957 mono, um, West Coast type sound. And this is a Pacific Jazz release. And in the Tone Poet series, I always look forward to these Pacific Jazz releases because they're so different from the Blue Notes. And I liked the Joe Pass very much. I liked Katanga. And again, I like this one too. So I, I am actually glad that I got it and I'm glad that I can track it. So don't be afraid to get the record. I have links for it in the description box below if you want to get it through Amazon and support the channel. I'll also have links to recent Tone Poets as well. So uh, take a look at that. Take a look at the um, earlier videos if you like, and we'll see you next time. I'm Scott for The Pressing Matters. Thank you for watching and have a great day.